This week, episode 337 of Stogie Geeks, Drew and I interview Nick Gervais from MyMonthlyCigars.com and David Rivera from Martinez Hand-Rolled Cigars Factory in New York. They have an event coming up. We're going to talk about it. We also have the chance to have a roundtable discussion to talk about cigar clubs and hand-rolled cigar factories that are still around today here in the United States. We might run into some cigar news and stuff you might need to know. Stogie Geeks, episode 337, starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stoy Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm all set up for the uh, Stoke Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode 337. I am your host, Joe Josepa. Privilege and an honor to be here. But first, I need to introduce you to a man who has been late for his own one-year anniversary party, the little dark-haired kid from Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the man, Mr. Drew Gavin. What up? Well, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to, this is not your official one year anniversary party. In fact, right. looking at the calendar, we're about three weeks late. You totally yeah. freaking botched that up. But we're going to have a one year anniversary party coming up for you and do something pretty special pretty soon. We'll have to figure that out. So awesome. anyway, how are things over in Texas? Uh, you know, a little hot. You know, we're at the uh, 104 today with a high index of a 110. So we're going to be suffering through that until early next week. Uh, just had my grandson's birthday party, uh, as you all know. But, uh, well, at least you guys do in the studio. Two years old? Uh, yeah, two years old. So that was pretty fun. Uh, it was a blast. Uh, we had Dinosaur City in our house, and that nice. was pretty cool. Yeah, I got that set up for him. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, the last few weeks, yeah, it's been crazy, man. First of all, I got stung by a bunch of uh, wasps, as I was telling you. Uh, so I got pretty beat up by some wasps here on my patio. Somehow they just took over my patio, and I didn't notice it until I sat down for my cigar, and then I got attacked. So that that didn't go over so well. Uh, then after that, you know, just, just, uh, life things got in the way for there, which is why I couldn't appear on the last episode, uh, my birthday episode, but, uh, I got new specs, Look at got you. a new hair, got a new haircut, <clears throat> Look at you. got a new black shirt, nice. you know, Johnny Cash style, you know, everything's good. Yeah. So everything is wonderful. Everything good. Just what? so you know, story geeks, Drew was telling me the Hornet, uh, wasp story. And the first thing I asked was, did it ruin your cigar and coffee? And the answer was yes. <laughs> he goes into like a half hour rant. I'm like, did it ruin the cigar? He's like, yeah, dude, it was pretty bad. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so apparently Hornets and Wasps love cigars. Love it. And coffee, mm. good. Good for them. Good for them. Oh, yeah. 
It's kind of like me. I have a stinger, and I like uh, coffee and cigars, so uh, here we go, all right? I like it. I like it. There Drew, today you and I have the interview. Kind of super cool uh, collaboration yes. effort here. Uh, Nick Gervais from My Monthly Cigars and David Rivera from Martinez Handrolled Cigar Factory over in New York. They are collaborating on a event, and we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to yeah. kind of have a roundtable discussion and talk a little bit about you know, hand-rolled cigar factories that still exist today uh, there. Uh, and Stow Your Geeks, I already got David to commit to that episode that I wanted to do over a year ago about highlighting some of those factories. Um, we've had Gary Lyota on one um, who is from the same state. I think it's a Rochester, New York. I don't know di distance-wise as to where you are, but, but, but David can tell us about that. And uh, yeah. I think it's super cool that there are still these cigar factories that – are uh, out there, and they're not only on Kaya Ocho in Little Havana as well. They're in other uh, states, so we're going to highlight that later. And then um, uh, we have Nick here from MyMonthlyCigars.com, so Story Geeks, check yeah. them out. And uh, I want to welcome Nick to the show. Nick, welcome to Story Geeks. What's going on, guys? How we doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm very well. Oh boy! Thanks for having me. I'm nah, excited for super this. excited to have you on. We also yeah. have David from Martinez Handrolled Cigar Factory. David, welcome to Stogie Geeks. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Appreciate Thank being here, and I'm excited to be on. Yeah, thanks for coming. If I get sidetracked with questions, make sure we take time to talk about what I intro. That often happens, and Drew's like, "We got to talk about that." So <laughs> you know, it happens all the time, especially once we start uh, talking. You guys have an event coming up. I want to take some time and kind of highlight that how that came about. Uh, and then we can get to know each of you and we can kind of go back and forth and stuff like that and, and uh, talk about some of the topics that I mentioned. Sure, sure. You know yeah, what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, let Dave talk about it because mainly the whole, the whole key around this is Martinez Cigars, which has been around for over 46 years now, is the best kept secret in the industry. Um, yes. I, I've said it since the, the first time I smoked one of their cigars, and I'll say it continuously. These guys are the best people to work with. Um, they're very unselfish. Uh, they help other people get their starts. Uh, Dave won't talk about this. That's why I'm doing it. But, um, <laughs> you know, now now's their time to shine. So uh, they've got a really cool uh, thing going on here with um, they're putting out a TPE, a cigar at TPE. Mm. It's going to be unnamed, unbanded, unknown. And uh, we're collaborating together because we've been working together now for a few months, uh, probably about six months. And uh, we're going to put together a, a pretty big contest for it. But the main key here is the uh, TPE cigar that, that everybody's really excited about. And I'm going to let Dave go ahead and talk about that because he would know more about it than me because I'm not in the factory with him. Right. Well, before you jump into that, <laughs> is this contest going to be available for us to participate? Not the host of Stogie Geeks, like Stogie Geeks themselves or... You don't want to participate, Joe? No, I'm just saying, like, you know, because, <laughs> no, see, I have to deliver the context. No, this is a tough job, being the host, right? I have to deliver the context oh. about audio and, vis audio and visual, right? And mm -hmm. we, we know the stats, like, you know, there, there's like yeah. a 60-40 split. So 60% of our, our audience listens to us on audio. I, gotcha. I, oh, okay. I'm amazed at that number. Like, I would think it would be lower because I, if I had the option to watch a, a, a podcast, I would do it in video and just have it on audio if I wasn't there and kept, keep checking it in. But that's just yeah. me. And I, I Story Geeks, I, Drew and I can't thank you enough for here, li listening to us rant yes. for hours on shows, <laughs> especially in audio. But if you listen to this on <laughs> audio, you might want to switch to video. It's a little bit more comical, especially on Drew's side because he gets oh, yeah. to stare at me, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, so could is is all kidding aside? Is this uh, event available for the Story Geek listener to participate in as well? Yeah, awesome. it is. It's going to be available for everybody. Um, awesome. You know, we we've got real concrete details coming out soon. It's going to launch first week of September, probably right after Labor Day. Okay. Um, we we haven't released the specifics, but I can tell you that uh, it is revolving around that TPE cigar and. You know, you guys are going to have a chance, you, your listeners, everybody else, they're going to have a chance to win this, um, win the cigar, and then a, a bunch of other cool prizes as well. So that, that's all going to be released right now. We've got a couple of podcasts that we're working with um, that we've collaborated with as yep. uh, part of the Collective Smoke. They're actually doing a bunch of, uh, they've done a string of contests over the past uh, month and a half. We're on our final one right now. Um, and then once that's done, we'll start talking real more detail about this contest. But I'm going to, I'm going to pass over to Dave, let him start talking 
about the the cigar itself because I'm beyond excited for it, and, and I'll trip over myself if I talk about it anymore. Hell of an intro, man. <laughs> Hell of an intro. Dave, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, my man? Yeah, so we're uh, developing the cigar for TPE coming up this year. It's a um, unbanded, unnamed. We're going to unveil the name at the TPE. Um, it's something that we were thinking about doing, uh, originally doing something like this, but uh, talking to the guys from the Collective Smoke and then uh, coming out. So we figured, listen, they've been very supportive to us and everything about this. So we were going to you know, donate some boxes over to them and then see where it goes. But this cigar is going to be offered once a year. Uh, it's being developed that we're speaking right now with the Sus Martinez back at the um, at the factory, and it's uh, something that we're looking to you know put our put our flag in the ground and say that we're here. You know we've been around for 46 years, going on 47, and um, like Nick said, we're not really known outside of New York in the tri-state area, so we're kind of new outside of that area. So, but we're new with that 46 years experience. So this TPE cigar is going to be something that we're going to come out every year. Uh, there's going to be a limited amount made, anywhere between like 500 to 1,000 boxes made. And uh, this is going to be an opportunity for the listeners out there, Stogie Geek listeners, uh, the Collective Smoke listeners, and have an opportunity to to um, win these boxes before they get the TPE. Mm. That's an interesting concept to be able to have yeah. it before it gets the TPE. I like it. Yeah. I like yeah. it, especially uh, you know, um, non trade show uh, dependent. Sundays. I like yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Like well, the cool it. thing, right, Dave, right? This is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but guys, I'm, I'm pretty sure, and Dave can confirm it, this is just going to be a retail cigar once it finally comes out in yeah. full production. You're not going to be able to buy this. So that's what's really cool about um, your listeners, your viewers, and everybody else out there. They got a chance to win this thing. And if it's not at their local shop, I mean, they're not making more than, uh, I guess I would guess, four or 500 boxes. Mm -hmm. And if it's not yeah. at your local shop or you don't have a connection, you're not going to get it. Uh, so your best chances are to try and win it. You know, and you can win some other cool stuff too. So I'm I'm pumped about it. I'm really excited. I can't wait for TPE uh, and, yeah. and the unveiling of this thing. If you go yeah. Stogie Geeks to Martinez Cigars dot com, you can um, browse around, shop if you want to. Is this going to be available for purchase after TPE, or is this no, just retail? Yeah, retail stores. Yeah, yep. that's the retail stores. Yep. Uh, we're not going to offer it on our website. Uh, it's going to be directly with uh, brick and mortars. Okay. So it's uh, yeah. So. The only way you can get it is in uh, retail stores, mm. and another way of getting it is winning um, winning the box. Yeah, so it's gonna be a box of ten, um, and it's gonna be a really good cigar. We're really going for the for it all. We want to make a like I said a big splash on this, and then everybody understand is that you know we're a small factory, a small little boutique. Uh, we manufacture everything right here. We blend everything right here, and uh, you know seeing it now, just seeing the tobacco come in, the blenders working with all these different tobaccos just to come up with the perfect blend that we're going to release a TPE. So, mm, yeah, we're nice. excited. Everybody's excited about it, and uh, I'm dying to try it myself. Where are we going to be directed to go to? Is there a URL up yet, or is it coming? Or It's going to be being uh, the sample. Uh, to enter the contest, you're going to be able to go on to My Monthly Cigars on the Collective Smoke page. Gotcha. Um, these, these boxes are, like I said, we're giving them to the Collective Smoke. They can do whatever they want with them, and then they decided to... Um, have everybody get a chance to have what they're getting. So let's, that's what we figured. Let's do this. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, when we announce, when we announce it coming up in a couple of weeks, we'll, we'll put the details out. Like Dave said, you know, entry will, uh, will go through my monthly cigars.com and you'll yep. be able to, we'll, we'll put more details on that there, but uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. And uh, there's going to be so many chances to win this cigar, but uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I keep getting speechless about it because I'm really, really excited to see what it is. <laughs> Dave, even yeah. though I'm close with Dave, he is keeping it really, really tight and close to the chest. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to make him slip up every now and then, but he's, he's not breaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> you mean you didn't even give like a sample to your boy? <laughs> it's not done yet. It's not even done. Like, you need to give him like a profile of what you're going for. Sorry about I saw it. That's all right. You're in New York. You expect New York. sirens. Exactly. If I didn't hear sirens, I think you're in Alabama. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. No, like so. Wow. So you got. So you, uh, you're not even going to release like rapper Brian the filler profile the yet. The, uh, yeah, we're gonna once the contest begins, we're gonna uh, release the filler, the binder, the construction of the cigar, but. Until then, which is, I'm going to tell you, it's probably going to be like a medium. 
medium to full body smoke. Yep. Nothing size. too overpowering. Yeah, even a really size. Not even gonna, like give us like a flavor or something. Nah, <laughs> nothing yet, no man. You got, you got to join See? it. And get it. <laughs> See, he's Told tight. Me, he's tight lipped. He doesn't slip up. Drew, you got a question? Nah. No, so this is is this good? Uh, is this going to be a limited run then at 500 boxes available? We're looking, between, that... yeah, between 500 to 1,000 boxes. Um, okay, and it's going to come out once a year. Uh, usually okay. around, we're thinking around the spring of every year it'll come out. Uh, coming into that, you know, the big time of the season for everybody. So yeah, we're looking about once a year, 500 to 1,000 boxes, and looking around the spring of every year. Mm. Nice, nice. So Dave, so the, I just wanted to let you know that this, uh, last night when I got home around eight o'clock. Um, your box that you had sent me uh, at, at was there waiting for me. So oh, nice. at at three a.m. this morning, nice. I was out in the garden, wasp and hornet free. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. With with a can of Coke, and uh, so I went ahead and I, I had to try the forty five series. Nice. So man, exactly. just just yeah, that was he sent me a forty five series. And uh, the other one, he leaves me right now. But all right, I'm, I'm yeah, all right. God, are we so yeah. Drew? Yes. Are we so freaking different people? Because I got the same sample from Dave, right? Yeah. I got the forty-five <laughs> series here, yep. and yesterday, and yesterday when it came to the studio, I had the uh, uh, flat f- iron. The, 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 yeah, the flat iron. So I got right yeah. here. Yeah. Oh my god, that, yeah. that's the my flat iron. That's what I'm, I'm supposed so, now. Yeah. So that yeah, so that forty-five this morning at three o'clock. I think my wife woke up around three thirty and looked outside. She's like, "What? And what are you doing? <laughs> so I'm doing, doing homework. homework. <laughs> doing homework." <laughs> so yeah. So so I, I mean that that I'm gonna tell you right now that that I just from the the, the aromas and and taking a cold draw and I bullet cut that one because of the size. Oh nice. Um, so I bullet cut it just to get the real concentration of the of the uh, uh, the vac- uh, the seco and the viso leaves and the lajero on that one and i'll tell you uh with the san andreas wrapper um uh, that that cigar really really performed very well the burn was very you know very nice and the uh, um the strength of it i mean like exactly how you how you described it it starts off at a medium and then it starts to transition into a full body and I, yeah. I, i'll tell you i i have the nub outside in the ash right now that i went that that's how much of it was left by the time I was done. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, but it was. I mean, talking about a great cigar. So yeah, three. You know, there I was at three o'clock in the morning, and this morning, and uh, man, thank you for sending me that. That was uh, definitely a really uh, nice treat, and I, you know, I'll definitely get some more uh, in my hands for that for my rotation. But yeah, um, oh, that's great. Yeah, so that great cigar for sure. The a flat iron I had, right? You um it's so funny, Drew. Like we Drew and I don't don't collaborate like before a show. Like if you can't come on Story Geeks and be a co host for two hours to talk about cigars, then we, we, we're good, right? So we we really exchange our notes like on the show. That's just how, how it works here. And it's so funny how we we had different ones. And I'm curious about this one and but the very first characteristic that I had with the flat iron number two, uh, you had um, what? Well, it's it's ranked medium to full. It's yep. uh, Ecuadorian binder, correct? Yep. And yep. Nicaraguan filler. Nicar- Nicaraguan filler. Uh, yep. What's the wrapper on that? It's Nicaraguan. Uh, that one's uh, the Nicaraguan natural Maduro, a natural wrapper. Yep. Yeah, it was a natural wrapper, right? Let me mm-hmm. tell you something. When I've had stuff from factory. Um, uh, hand rolled factory places in the United States that have sent samples to Stogie Geeks. The first characteristic that I had from when I had your smoke was th- you could taste the, the the Ecuadorian component that the 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 mm-hmm. softness over the Nicaraguan. The Nicaraguan spice wasn't as punchy as what I thought it was, but then when I was on your website, I'm like, ah, it's probably a little punchy with the Maduro because most of the flavor comes from the wrapper. I get that. Yeah. But let me tell you, I want to take the time because when I do Stogies of the Week with Drew and stuff like that, I talk about different components, right? I talk about um, complexity, flavor, and balance, and then I talk about, like, the construction of the cigars, Um you know, as far as like, if it's going to be portable, can I use it with golf? Can I not, etc. Here's where I'm going with this. My first takeaway on the construction 
with the cigar is the ash burns mm. exactly like a Cuban. And yes. this is what I mean by this. And I proved it this morning when I went for a pot against number five. I was, I'm looking at the humidor. We have a humidor here, and it's, it's mirrored. So, I mean, it's glass. So I smoked the pot against number four Cuban today, right? Because I, mm. I, I had it in my head about, like, the Cuban ash, right? <clears throat> and when it got, like, an inch away... You know how sometimes on some cigars, and I know it's burn and all that stuff, but on some cigars, it kind of goes a little bit uneven. Not canoeing, but like yeah. a little bit uneven. The ash was actually still thick enough to get off after that because I'm like a flick guy or I'm not like a, a long ash dude, like if it's over yeah. an inch, but like I was typing. So I was typing with it in my hand, smoking, you know, as I do my security stuff and all that stuff, and, and I'm typing. So I got movement, and it was there. And yeah. I was so in my head, I was like, wow, this is really constructed very well. Tastes yeah. very good. The Maduro is kind of like a little bit, probably more in my profile, but complexity on a scale of one to that, uh, uh, one to 10, I would give it a seven. A lot of that is because of the Ecuadorian kind of tones it down. Balance, mm -hmm. ba balance, super cool. You get a solid eight. Don't worry, I never give ten, so it's good, right? No, it's fine. Uh, right? And like my like my whole track record, I've never given a ten, right? Uh, you can go through three three as a content if you want to, or take my word for it, right? Um, and also, like the 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 flavor was super cool. I was super impressed with that, and yeah. so then I went to the Cuban to kind of test my ash theory. That for it's fresh in my head for the show. I was correct in that theory. I'm dying to see Drew's take on what he had right quick before we continue with with them. Like like what well, what what's your takeaway from your uh, what is this the uh, 45 series. 45 series yeah. yeah the 45 series. I mean I'm gonna tell you right now I had two ash drops on that whole cigar. That was it. So it's a, and each, yeah. Each ash drop on that cigar, and I wasn't, I wasn't baming or anything, and I'm not one of those people, and I'm not saying that it's a, it's a bad thing to take a picture of your ash being two inches, three inches long, but yeah, I, it, I mean, I was just, you know, doing this and, you know, on my phone and taking photos, and I, I took some photos of it as well. I mean, the ash stayed on there, and it dropped naturally. It dropped on its own. Yeah. Uh, and then on the second, you know, when I was in the uh, probably into the later second thirds and into the last third that ash i mean down to the uh, down to where i smoked it right down to i'm going to say at least just just under a half an inch man that that second ash dropped by itself and that's when it got too hot for me i'm like okay i can't hold this anymore <laughs> so sure. yeah but no i mean that, that definitely uh uh very very it was very consistent to burn it stayed it stayed true from the light i didn't have to relight it i didn't have to retouch it even when one side was just kind of uh, edging the other, um, for me, I just think that's rotation. So I just rotated my cigar a little bit and started taking my draws, uh, a few draws. And after that, it just kind of evened itself out. And then it just went on from there. It was it was, it was perfect. Uh, but, yeah, for me, that, 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 that cigar really gets spicy as well towards, towards the end of that stick, and which is what I really love. So that's... You know, to have that, and then, and of course, you know, vitamin N being in there, uh, the nicotine. Um, you know, I really, I was really trying to take it as low as I can get it. Uh, but yeah, very, very, very good cigar for sure. I focus on that stuff. Obviously, when I, I do a little bit more when we do reviews, and obviously a lot more when I do interviews, especially if I'm mm -hmm. able to get the sample like right at the same time as the show. Sometime I have to go check my notes and all that stuff, and. Uh, you know, but but that was the first component I knew, and when that sticks out to me, because like I'm not like a Cuban, like oh my god, I chase Cubans, but right. you can't deny, like you smoke a Cuban and you smoke a fake Cuban, right? We've all had them, right? Yeah. There is a difference, and part of it for me is cap, right? I go for the way way the cap goes. It's not like. Uh, it's not like this. It's never like this. It's always like comes up, kind of goes like a little slant, and then goes like that, and then a little slant again around. To me, that that that's like a Cuban esque type of cap that yep. I follow. But the second component that I go after is that ash. And the the cigar companies, whether they be classic facings from a story geek promo we're doing or whichever, or some 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 newer company, even though you're not newer, but you know what I mean, a newer company yeah, than yeah. me that I've been exposed to. 
I take a little bit more time when naturally when that ash is that slow and it's that slow burning. And what's super cool about that is that it doesn't get hot. Like the cigar itself doesn't get hot and it doesn't get ashy, which allows you to smoke it down to the nub. So kudos to yeah. you on that for sure. It, it, it yeah, made I, me want to say like, holy crap, I should probably like beg Dave to send more or go buy some, <laughs> whichever. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, because, because I'd love to, to, to kind of go through the profile for sure. Wait till you have the Maduro. The Maduro's going to give you a little more of a kick on it, yep. naturally. Yep. Uh, the flat iron natural is more of a creamy. It has a little bit of spice, but it's like really earthy, a little leathery on there. Yeah. Uh, it stays smooth all the way through. It's, it's, it's good for someone that's wanted, steps up a little bit from that mild smoke. So we pretty much in, introduce people at the shop, try the flat iron, and then they really, really enjoy it. Like Nick right here, he's, he swears the flat iron beats out the 45. So it, it's the a close one for me. Really? I, I like them both. Okay. Mm. So any more you want to yeah. talk about the event before we pivot on to other stuff? I mean, um, just, just keep an eye out, man. Like we're, we're, we're really starting to get to the home stretch here. Like okay. I said, you know, we, we've had these string of contests going so far. There's one live right now. Um, you know, shout out to the podcast that we're working with in a group called, called the collective smoke. It's four podcasts that got together just to kind of, you know, help educate the community, uh, spread the word a bit more. Uh, they're four totally different podcasts, um, you know, down to the nub cigar pulpit, uh, the good cigar and the straight cut. And right now the straight cuts running, a uh, their last, the last contest after they announced the winner of that, yep. we're, uh, we're going to announce the details of this upcoming main event. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. You're going to be able to get a lot of great, great cigars, a chance to win an awesome cigar before anybody else can get their hands on it. Mm -hmm. A couple of people have already won it. You know, the, the three, uh, four contests that we're running prior to yeah. this, um, the first three winners have already won one before it even came out and they won an entry into the contest, uh, the nice. big main event. So, so what yeah, there's going to be a couple of ways. It's awesome. Definitely... So what I'll do is as it gets closer to your launch yeah. date, email me, uh, Absolutely. the details, I'll share it on our social media and share it on our email list and, and, and get Appreciate it over it. to Drew and he can share it so that the story geeks can participate. And then I'll print it up and just read it on the show when it comes live so that they can just freaking. Just, awesome. just to refresh them as well, and I'll drive them to the URL of your site. So, yeah. Appreciate it. Cool, man. Thanks, no, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, hell yeah. That's awesome. awesome. Well, good luck That's with the really event. Is, is this the first event that you guys, you, you two are collaborating on, or have you done smaller ones in the yeah. past? Yeah. No, this is the first first project this that we're working part. on together. Um, you know, we, 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 Dave and I have gotten along really, really well. You know, I got introduced to him through uh, somebody else he's working with, and, uh, I mean, we just clicked right away, and, and we're nonstop spitting mm. out ideas i mean uh, we talk almost every day we've got uh, from now through the end of 2021 is is already booked up uh for us you know we've got so many ideas so many projects we want to work on and they're gonna be awesome this is just the first of many so so keep an eye out cool nice cool. yeah nice. definitely keep us posted uh as well or you know you can just ping me come back on the show if you want to come on the show for like a 15 minute blast because i don't you have want this face back on sure yeah, come on now. You, you, I'll, 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 I'll interrupt an interview and just Ooh. be like, yo, hold Ooh. on. We got to do a We're going to do a live commercial. Go ahead. All right. Later, man. Wow, quit Peace. calling. All you right. know what I mean? <laughs> whatever you want to do. I might take you up on that. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to do. Like, whatever you want to do. As creative as you want to get. That's cool. We'll, sure. we'll, we'll, we'll right. do it that way. Just, yeah. So, um, <laughs> certainly. Super cool. Um, well, good luck with the event. Stogie Geeks. I will keep you posted on that. Uh, if you go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 337. You will get uh, the URLs to both of their sites, so you can uh, bookmark mymonthlycigars.com and find out the information probably quicker than Story Geeks because of rotation. Or uh, you can just tune into the show, and we can um, we'll announce it as we get going. Um, Drew, yeah, wh who do you want to ask the first question to? So like you guys want to do like rock paper scissors, or because like I kind of want to talk to you both. Or actually, let, let's just do it this way. I'm gonna ask a question, yeah. and then you guys can answer it in in your in the way you get started. This way, the, the interview will probably go along, probably be a lot faster that way. All right? Let's, yeah. let's go. Uh, let's go age before beauty. So, Dave, you you go. Ahead. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, like it, like it. Age before oh, beauty. Man. All right, oh, God, Dave. Cool. Uh, basically, uh, Drew, do, do you want to ask a question first or? You want sure. Me to, you want you want to do the quick, uh, just soft ones. Here we go. Um, I, 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 I'm not a softball. I'm Beatles going hard. I'm going hard right. right away. Oh no! 
I'll warm them up and uh, you, you go ahead and That's knock cool. them out of the park. There you okay. go. Uh, Beatles or Stones, which one are you going with? Oh, man. Um, He's from New York. The Stones, neither. the Stones, the Stones. The Stones. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Stones song? Man, I don't have a favorite Stones song, to be honest with you, but I'd rather listen to the Stones than the Beatles. There you go. All righty. Joe. Yeah. On you. That's it? That was your questions? Oh, I just, I just warming them up. What about, what about no, Nick? What about Nick? I'm not scared past that okay. one. I'm not, a music, well, Nick... I'm not a big music guy. I, I listen to both. <laughs> I, I'm going to cop out and say 50-50, but gun to my okay. head, you know, you have to go w- w- with the Stones. I think it's a little bit uh, closer to our time, but there's no denying the Beatles were pioneers and, and their music's awesome. I'll listen to both just the same, but yeah. for, for the sake of the show, I'll pick one. I'll pick the Stones. Yeah. There you go. All right. Beatles took Three. Elvis over the edge, man. That's right. Made him freaking. I'll take Elvis over the stuff. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Elvis is yeah. like, you ever see the Brady Bunch when we were little? Yeah. Like the freaking yeah. Johnny Bravo episode? Like Elvis. <laughs> like, you know? He knew, you know, he's a king of rock and roll. He knew the key of G and A. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> right? right place, nice. right time. Right? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys you, set that up. You uh, set that up. You, you, you were playing in that one. No, oh, never. Yeah. Never. Yes. Never. Never. <laughs> absolutely never. Never. Um, I, I would love to know your decisions to have you get into this crazy, crazy premium cigar business. There you go. Dave, you're up. first on that. Jeez. Uh, well, I got into it about 20 years ago when I was working for a cigar accessory company. Okay. Did that. Yeah. Did that for about three years. And then I opened up my own lounge. I uh, had that for five. And I left the business for about 10 to do real estate. And then being at the Martinez for 15 years, going back and forth, I was debating on um, getting back into the business, starting a brand. And uh, speaking of Seuss, he wanted, he was looking to expand the company. So I pretty much just. Left the shop, went down to my job, put in my two weeks, and came back and told him that he hired me. So I just left, and that's how I got back into it. So it's one of the best decisions I've made. I love coming to work every day, seeing stuff being made, and it's probably the best thing I've done throughout my whole career. Mm-hmm. How, how long have you been there? Uh, I've been working here for two years, but okay. I've been dealing with Seuss because I was supplying his cigars in my, in my uh, lounge. Yep. So probably 15 years I've been with him. Hmm. All right. Derail question, because you mentioned it. Where was your lounge? Uh, I was up in Rockland County, up, uh, just about 45 minutes north of uh, New York City. Okay. In my hometown called Havistraw. Yep. And uh, it was a really cool. It was connected to a brewery, so we had like an outdoor seating connected to the brewery, so you can grab your cigar, sit outside, have a drink. We would have like uh, scotch tasting, bourbon tasting, included with the brewery. and It was it was really cool. But then that's when uh, the whole smoking ban kicked in, so it yep. kind of made um, life hell. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you are in one of those states that doesn't put up with it. As no. opposed to like we're located here in Rhode Island. Boston doesn't put up with it, you know. Yeah. It, there's that's why when you go to Rhode Island, which is like the smallest state and you can drive through it with no traffic in, you know, thirty eight, forty minutes. It's like 39 shops here, right? And yeah. and then you go over the border, and then there's like no shops. And then the next t- state up is New Hampshire, and there's more shops that are right on the border and all of that yeah. stuff. In Rhode Island, I'm sorry, in Massachusetts and New York, California, the smoking bans were a lot heavier and a lot quicker as far as law to turn around and putting into action than yeah. – some of the ones here, like I know there was a year notice here in Rhode Island, calendar year, then it became a 50 feet rule. Y- y- we're notorious for stretching rules, so you had some outdoor yeah. seating. We yeah. see this now in ample effect with COVID. <laughs> you know, the yeah. outdoor seating, you know, <laughs> it's like social distancing and outdoor seating. Well, I've been smoking cigars for freaking 20 something years. We've been doing this shit for a while. But anyway, right? It's business as always, right? You know, you have a separate parking lot or whatever and, and stuff right. like that. And so, so it was the smoking ban that led you just to have you just say, like, I'm out. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. that. It just became too difficult. And, to be honest with the taxes and just in New York alone are, yeah. are ridiculous. Yep. So right. I just ended up just getting rid of the store, going into real estate. But the thing is, cigars is a completely different industry than anything else. And it's that, that connection you will have with people with the community, 
smokers, manufacturers, the whole nine is what I miss most. Mm -hmm. And being at the factory, I mean, it's like a big family. You could just come in, bring a bottle, whatever you drink and sit down, watch the rollers roll and just hang out with everybody. And that's what I miss the most. So what I, you know, my decision was just easy. I just made it on a, I think it was a Tuesday afternoon. I left the factory, went into my office and said, Hey, um, there's my two weeks. I'm done. Yeah. 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 That's cool. That's super cool. So, so you've always been romanticized by the premium cigar industry. Oh, yeah. You've obviously taken a step and owned the brick and mortar shop. I did as well. I used to own Spotted Dog Cigar Company here in Providence. Uh, it was during the tail end of the boom. Crazy time. Um, you know, and but it, it was a pain. It, 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 really, yeah. it, it, really, it really was a pain. And when we decided to exit, it's amazing when you're a business owner, and you make an exit strategy that you think is going to take a month, and it's like, wow, it takes like three days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, okay, exactly. I'm going to start the phase out, right? We're going to start phasing out. That's why, like, when I'm with, you know, when 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 I in my other job uh, with uh, other than Stogie Geeks, you know, it's like when when you get into like phasing, it's like, yeah, this ain't going to take too long to phase. <laughs> You know, yeah, you no. corporate think it's gonna take too long to phase, but this is gonna go. I think it quick. took me two days. I'm yeah. like, yeah. I'm done. Let's get this over with. Yeah. Let's get rid of the inventory and close up shop and get out of here. Because once I left, the, once I left the business on the on the retail end, mm-hmm. it was like a load off my back. Yeah, like you, you go home every day while you're have you have this business and you're thinking, man, I got to sell this amount of yep. cigars to cover my bills. I got all this other stuff going. It's just, it just was a never ending like stress that I didn't want yep. and w- walking away. But once you walk away, you're like, man, I miss just being around it. And that's, that's what drove me back to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I can totally relate to you as a business owner. I, I still have my advertising agency open. Um, and even though I have a component that's combined with story geeks and security weekly, I still rack my brain daily as far as okay. Cause now I have a virtual assistant cause I'm here full time with security mm-hmm. weekly and doing that and and it's like i have a virtual assistant but i'm still like you know okay wow i gotta pay her and oh i gotta do this and yeah. oh oh i gotta do this and oh crap freaking state wants their quarterly taxes well oh, why is it always equal to freaking what i got in the bank how the hell do they know that <laughs> like, <laughs> it's always like two or three hundred dollars that what you go for your exactly. buffer it's like screw the buffer <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> it's amazing how that works you know right you have a you have you have a list of what you're crossing out after you pay your taxes. Like, all right, I'm not paying. I'm not doing this event. We're not doing this. I got to pay this. Yep. So yeah, I totally understand that. It's one of those things that people don't understand. They see you having a business and like, oh, right. yeah, you must be living the life. I'm like, yeah, you want to trade? I'll take your nine to five right now and take mine and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's different. I, I actually have the luxury to have both. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I got my nine to five here at, at uh, Security Weekly. It includes the Story Geeks. And then I have mine, and it, it takes a little bit of the pressure off, but yeah, it, uh, it's like I still spend time at the end of the day worrying about, like, you know, do I go another year? Do I not? You know, I can sell right. these these accounts and just freaking do that, you know. And it, uh, So I, I get it. I totally get it. We can do another episode yeah. on that. But, yeah, thanks for sharing, <laughs> thanks for sharing that story. I, I feel your pain. Hey, I know exactly why you exited. You don't, you don't have to explain anything to me. You know what I mean? I was like, you know. And it was funny because our shop merged with our shop. The owner of our shop actually opened up another shop in the province metro and it's still open today. And we closed oh, in 2004. Great. So wow. the, the owner just loves it. But it's like it's different. It's a different business model. It depends if you're paying yeah. rent. depends if you own the building. Depends who your neighbors are. Depends who your clients yeah. are. Depends how the patrons. It's like there's so many headaches. And at the end of the day, it's like you weren't a cigar shop owner. You were a firefighter. Because <laughs> exactly. all you do is put out some fires and make sure the money doesn't burn up so you have a little bit to eat. I get it. I get it. Totally it's get funny. it. It's funny you say that because the landlord where I was owned the bar next to us. And he was having trouble with his management and sure. going crazy. So I'm like, I'll trade you free rent and I'll run your bar for you. And that was... That was the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life because mm. I'm running two businesses mm. working from like 10 in the morning to 4 o'clock in the morning every day, six days a week mm-hmm. to where it was just too much. And you, you try to do anything to cut corners and get the cost down, but after a while, you're just like, you know, this is enough. I'm done. Let's do something else. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we sold out, we sold out furniture to another cigar shop that was opening. And 
freaking inventory we we knew it was going to where half of it was going to the other shop that was opening from the previous partner so it was pretty clean yeah. and we were just like we're out and people were like are you serious yeah we're out we're, we're, we're out we're out like you know we're, 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 what are you gonna do i'm like i don't know but we're out like <laughs> yeah that's true that is so true you're like what, what's the next step i don't care i'll figure it out the next morning but i'm out I'm yeah done. man yeah right. had a day like that yesterday you know, had a day like that yesterday. <laughs> Having a crazy 24 hours. Uh, yeah, Nick. Ooh. How did you get into this business? And do you, well, how did you start? For the concept of a cigar club, Drew and I have been dabbling with this. Ironically, right. it's so crazy how you connected with us uh, mm -hmm. in the timing. Because if you go back 10 episodes of Stogie Geeks, just the past 10, we've been dabbling. Like, you know, some of these Scott clubs are starting to sprout out. And, you know, they're not bad ideas from the consumer perspective. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about that, how you got started, what was in your head when you got started, where you guys are, how the Story Geek listener can get involved. Yeah. What was in my head? My God, what a loaded question. That's uh, well, <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of things. But yeah, no, I've, I've been smoking uh, cigars for 20 plus years. And, and to be honest, I cut my teeth on cigar clubs. You know, when I first started, I wanted to learn a little bit more. I don't know what's out there. Uh, and it's really, to me, there was no better way than to join a club. Um, so for me, I started looking at it in the last five, six years. I really got into the, the hobby more and more of uh, learning, taking that deeper dive, you know, um, uh, origins of tobacco, the flavors, the profile, et cetera. And, uh, you know, I was just like, I'm helping people out. Like I'm talking to friends and, and they're starting to pick up smoking and we're talking and I'm helping them pick stuff. It just clicked. It's like, you know what? I want to help more people with that. I want to get, more people educated about cigars in, in an easier way than I did it kind of, you know, just kind of fly by the seat of your pants, just doing the research, looking around, no better way to be than, than a cigar club. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I started doing some research on the clubs and every club out there is great. The one thing I saw was every club was taking a little pocket of the market of the cigar market. And they were kind of segregating themselves. In, in my opinion, they were great clubs, but there wasn't something that, blanketed everybody that covered everybody and that's where uh my monthly cigars a cigar club for everyone came, came to be uh, i wanted to create a club where every month you'll get four different cigars uh so you'll have an experience of maybe a medium smoke maybe a, um, a full body maybe like a real spicy cigar a maduros connecticut's everything i can i can try to get in one box to be a, a nice variety i try to do that month to month so I decided, you know, did the research, figured it out, let's do it, you know, and, and started it. Uh, it, was, it was about a year of planning and then started up last year. We had our first box um, June of, of 2019. Mm -hmm. So we just sent out uh, our 15th box uh, for August and September's coming up soon. Deadlines tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, for that. So uh, and actually quick, uh, we do an extra in our boxes every month. So in the Robusto and the El Presidente, the Robusto is four cigars. The El Presidente is just double that. Uh, it's a great pack to share with people or to smoke too, because as you guys know, these are handmade products. You know, you may have an, uh, an opinion about one and then you'll never smoke it again, but maybe that was, maybe that was a bad cigar. Maybe, maybe it was just rolled incorrectly or, or the roll was having a bad day, something. It wasn't humidified. Try the next one. And then, you know, I always try to, to formulate my opinion on a cigar. So, so I think that's a great pack to do, but, um, normally we put an extra in those every month and uh just kind of a teaser here we're actually going to have a, a martinez product in next month in the september box i can't say what it is uh but there's going to be something from from uh, dave and jesus at martinez in there so if anybody wants to join join now uh because we get a nice taste of, of what you guys have been smoking what we're smoking now but um so yeah so that was born and done nothing but grow over the past year i mean it's it's humbling the support you get mm. and the the members are, are just awesome i mean they're absolutely fantastic uh I, i've getting gotten so much feedback from them that's helped me grow the business and, and create a better club because that's all i want to do i want to make sure everybody's having fun enjoying the product that they're getting um you know you talk about how it's good for consumers you're 100 correct i mean like i said you it's easy to learn from a club at a real inexpensive 
uh, and it's a really inexpensive way to do it. So, for example, you know, uh, the Robusto box is four cigars. It's twenty nine ninety nine. But I give you an MSRP guarantee where the cigars in the box are going to have an MSRP that's always over thirty bucks. And to be honest, they're they're always over forty. Um, so you're averaging about ten bucks a cigar uh, retail, and that's what a club is to me. If it, it equates to a lounge, so if I'm going to go into a lounge, I'm only buying one. You know, I'm not buying a box when I go in a lounge because I want to try it. Mm-hmm. And if you bought these, you can buy cigars cheaper online. You can buy them through me. I have retail as well. And, and we sell them cheaper. But you have to buy a box. You have to buy a five pack. And what if you don't like the cigar? Right. And you're out right. four to 19 cigars and 200 bucks of cigars you're not going to smoke. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the clubs are great. The clubs are great for a consumer in that way. And they're also great um, for retail shops, uh, brick and mortars too, because then you've got members that go in and say, Hey, do you carry this cigar? Right. You carry that right. now they're aware of it. And maybe they up their inventory a little bit and, and sell a little bit more. And then, uh, it's also really good for the manufacturers. I mean, Dave can attest to that. I mean, what better way to reach, yeah. you know, thousands of people in one shot with your cigar and to have them smoke it and, and really, you know, get an idea and a sense of what else is out there. And who knows, they like that cigar. And then they start going to Martinez cigars.com and, and they start buying boxes from Dave. Now Dave benefits from it. So, so it's really a, a three way ben- benefit um, between the consumers uh, lounges and uh, manufacturers. And I'm a huge supporter of the brick and mortar. I, I, I'm at my lounge probably three days a week more during the winter time. Um, I think they're great. Uh, it, I'm willing to pay whatever, really. I shouldn't say that out loud because if my lounge is, is watching or listening, uh, they'll charge me more, but, um, <laughs> you know, I look at it as rent, you know, you go in there, it's a place to smoke. It's a place to do work. It's a place to just kind of relax. And, uh, you know, I'll pay that, that price for it. So definitely I always guide people to brick and mortars first and, um, and then online second. And that's coming from me. I- I'm a retailer online as well. So I'd rather you buy a cigar from your local shop than me first. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah but- I'm enjoying it, man. I'm having a lot of fun, meeting a lot of great people. Uh, this industry, I continue to say, it's probably the best industry out there from top to bottom. Uh, yeah. You know, cigars, uh, there's, there's a friend of ours that says, cigars are the great equalizer. And it's so true. It doesn't matter race, uh, religion, or, you know, w- even status, like whatever your salary. You can right. have a guy who makes $500,000 sitting next to a guy that makes $50,000. They're smoking a cigar. It's the cigar. There's no color to it. There's no nothing else to it except let's enjoy this cigar. So I really love the community aspect of it. And um, like I said, we're growing fast. Uh, we're continuing every month over month is just up and up and up and uh, getting busier and busier. And then we get to get, do cool things like this TPE cigar with Dave and, mm. and Jesus over at Martinez. And uh, there's more projects in mind. And we meet guys like you guys who, who, who do the good deed of uh, getting the word out. You know, oh, yeah. this is manufacturers love you guys, <laughs> you know, they, they want you guys because you get to reach people in their pockets and their cars, you know, right on their cell phones. And it, right. it's great. I, so I'm having a blast. It's, having a blast. Uh, it's super cool. I'm, I was going through your website and are you, oh, you were the one? Uh, yeah, right. I was the one. Right? I was the one. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like, I, ha- I have two listeners. Uh, to, <laughs> yeah. to to this show, it's like my mom and my brother. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> Other than oh, that, so I that's did have it. three on the side. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, that's right. What it was. No, like you got <laughs> some su- like like I want to encourage the story geek listener. Go to mymonthlycigars.com. Like you got some super cool stuff there. Like nice. you like you have the Gilberto Oliva Reserva sampler and the Golf Tool. I actually have mm-hmm. the Golf Tool, that exact mm-hmm. Golf Tool that I use. It's like a belt clip. I'm golfing tomorrow, mm-hmm. so I'm super pumped. But you know, and, and like it's super cool, right? It's got a cigar cutter, a divot tool you need, and a marker. Hooks on like a little belt clip, and freaking there, away you go. And like yep. you know, f- forty bucks, you get a five pack and a golf tool. But more importantly, like you know those little plastic cases, story geeks. For like forty four dollars, you get five sticks in there, and you get a freaking case. Like if you 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 get a case, right? So it's like yeah, the, herf- the herfedors. Yeah, that's yeah, such a great yeah, deal. yeah. The herfedors, right? And it's like yeah. it's like wow. And then I'm looking at. And then I, I started to jump on, and I'm and I'm looking at some some of the brands, and I'm like, dude, he's got some pretty some pretty rear finds uh, there. Rear for a brick and mortar right. northeast comparison. I'm saying not rare for being online, right? Right. But right. like, if you go to the list of, oh no, I'm sorry, where was I? Cool. I can't find. Oh, Scott Samplers, duh. Yeah. Right, so I'm over there. I'm clicking on uh, uh, buy cigars, cigar sample. It's like you can get uh, this one stuck out of my head. 
You can get a five pack. God damn it, where is it? Oh yeah, you can get a five pack for like the brick and uh, the the brick house M- mighty sampler, which mm-hmm. retailers unless they're super big into like J C Newman, they're not gonna have that retail five pack, right? Unless there was a special right. or whatever. But you can get a yeah. mighty freaking sampler of four brick house cigars, which I've always raved about them and their marketing of five dollars in a comfortable chair, right? But for twenty seven <laughs> bucks, you get a freaking sample of, of of what they have. Like it's super cool. Yeah, you know? yeah, hard to beat, huh? Yeah, no, it's great, and that's that's the cool thing. The one of the main things I was trying to do with the club as well is, you know, you get a cigar that you like in in the subscription box, and what do you do when when you like that cigar? You know, where do you go? Go to your brick and mortar first. I always say that, but if you don't find it there, come back to the site. We're going to have it on the site. You can just buy more then. Right. And that's what I mean when I say you're not out all that money from buying a box of twenty, right. and then you don't like it. You know, it's uh, you come back, you buy five pack if we got it. You buy samplers. Try to give you, you know, everything. And there's more to come to, you know, that there's a lot more. We have, uh, we're having conversations with a lot of people right now, a lot of manufacturers, you know, including Martinez. Um, we're going to have some really cool stuff. So, so we're adding to it every day, every month. It's, um, it's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled and excited to, to see what the future holds. Oh, yeah, yeah. One other one that sticks out is the Nicolibra 1990 25th anniversary silver. Oh, you those are a, great. I love those. get a pack of torpedoes, five of them, for freaking $30. Ooh. Like, Dude, like, <laughs> what are you, a 501c3? That's the tax code you put for nonprofit. Me? <laughs> God, I wish. I wish. Right? Uh, yeah. No, not when, I, not when I file every month. That's hey, sure. that's an no idea, way. Drew. We could turn Stoic Geeks into, like, a church. And then, like, if people come <laughs> in, they can give donations to us, and we can preach. I'll get, like, a podium. And, like, all the profit would, would, would be, like, tax exempt. <laughs> Do it. I'll, Are you in, Drew? No. I, uh, sounds like a bad <laughs> idea, right? <laughs> but but no, seriously, like like like, like Nicolibra, like 25th anniversary torpedo. You're not gonna walk into a brick and mortar and find that no. stick. That you're not. You're no. Like you're just not. No. I know that. I know. I I know that from from experience. Thank you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and like for, like I said, for 30 bucks plus shipping, take the Story Geeks listeners b- b- before Drew is like bursting at the seams to ask a question, right? Um, take this. Take the Story Geeks listener to how the monthly subscription component works. Do they know what they're getting, or is it truly a surprise every time? No, it's a surprise every time. I like that sort of factor. That's what I liked about the clubs that, that I was joined. Uh, yep. I joined a while ago. Is uh, I don't know what I'm going to get. Um, so I keep that under wraps. And, and to be honest, I don't even say what anything's going to be for the next month, even though I know well in advance. Sure. But earlier, you know. Uh, I want to let people know because they keep asking, when are you going to have Martinez in there? You're working with Martinez. When are you going to have? We're going to have something from them in September. So keep an eye out for that. So that's the only thing I've ever released out of, out of 15 boxes now. Um, I've never never given a clue or a hint as to what's coming. So I think that's part of the lore, too. It's it's Christmas every month. You know, you get a, you get a gift every yeah. month. You unbox a nice little package. And the best part about it is it's cigars. So you yep. can't go wrong. And if you do it with a friend, you can compare notes, have fun, freaking stay socially yeah. distanced and uh, rock and yeah, roll. Yeah, we have, a, we have yeah. a lot of members that do the uh, El Presidente just for that. You know, yeah. they save a few bucks, too. You know, it's really, really good value. And that's what I want to give is, is a value. Because if you uh, have a bad experience with cigars or you think it's too expensive and it costs too much, you're not going to come back. And that's not what the industry wants. And that's not what I want when right. I'm trying to educate people and, and I want them to be educated not only on cigars and, and tobacco in general, but the industry and the community as a whole, just to see how awesome it really is, how great the people are. Um, because I've never seen an industry that, that really competes on a business level, but they help everybody helps each other out. It's unbelievable to see, to see the camaraderie in the community aspect. So that's what I like the most. And hopefully you and Dave will stay friends. If you're not cheaper on your site for Martina cigars, then Martina cigars. <laughs> 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 that's on, that's on Dave. That's on Dave. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like a penny more. We'll you know? It's, like, <laughs> it's kind of like, the fun. I, I, I live in a water town here in Bristol, Rhode Island. And, and like they, they have like the corn stands and they're like right across the street 
from each other. And it's like oh, corn yeah. start at seven dollars, then one goes six seventy five, <laughs> the other one goes seven and a quarter, and they have corn wars, and it's so it's, it's so like a funny. gas station. It, it, yeah, you know, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Yeah, we believe it or not, some of those uh, online people get like that, like you know. But yeah. but I think honestly, your your prices are super competitive. You got some hidden gems in there for sure. I can right. list four or five more, but you know, for the sake Thanks. of time. You know, you, uh, definitely worth checking out MyMonthlyCigars.com. Drew, I know you have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, my, my question was, and I think you and I talked about this before, Joe, when we were talking about getting Nick on the show. It's just the process of, uh, you know, how does that process happen between you actually uh, coming up with these boxes monthly like or the, the, the cigars they're going to send out? I mean, is that a process of, people send you kind of ideas from the manufacturer's side and then you kind of just sort through them and figure that out. How does that happen? Can you take us through that process? Yeah, sure. I just, I just throw darts, see what happens, whatever lands on. Nice. <laughs> no, I don't do that. No, it's, uh... <laughs> I, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Jeez, I You're like, well on your yeah. way to become a brick and mortar, huh, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's you know actually, what? um, it's a combination of a few things. Um, you know, I have a running list of cigars that I want to put in there and, and I'm lucky enough to get a lot of samples from companies that want to do what I talked about earlier, get, yep. spread the word, get their name out there. Um, sure. and, and like I said, no better way than, than a cigar club. You're reaching thousands of people in one shot, you know, mm, and, sure. instead of having them buy that cigar when it's next to another one they already know um you're putting it in their hands you know right 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 in their home um but i've got a running list going that i want to put in every month and it's just kind of every month what can i get the best variety for um you know it's it's a combination of smokes that i've had um that pe- smokes that people may not have had um that's kind of the the fun about it is like okay i don't think a lot of people know about this one let me see if i can get this one in in the next month or two and um and, and it's also what people want. You know, people will message me. It's like, hey, you should check out da-da-da. Do you ever think about putting this cigar in there or that manufacturer? So it's it's uh, it's kind of a combination of, of those things. And, you know, whatever works at the end of the day for me and uh, everything adds up right. And that's what we end up with every month. So yeah. it's always something different. Always something different. Nice. 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 Super was, cool. Go ahead, Drew. Right. Oh, no, I was going to say, uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, Nick also has a partner here in Texas that I have yet to meet. Uh, and what I'm talking about is uh, as a, uh, a, a blogger, he's on uh, YouTube and, uh, that's how, that's how I came across your, uh, your, uh, cigar club there, Nick, is that I was, one day I was watching some of the other, um, uh, YouTube guys on there and I seen, uh, I came across this guy named Martin Amaya. Amaya. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Love Martin. Martin's the best. Oh man. You know what? I I saw his I saw one of his one of his deals and and then I saw a couple of other ones and I saw that you know he was a a subscriber to your uh, to your uh, mm-hmm. your cigar club and then uh, and then I was hooked on there. So you're gonna have to hook us up because I know he's just he's just literally maybe 20 minutes from me. I think he's in Plano. He's and, that cl- uh, yeah. He's in Plano. He's that close to you, huh? No kidding. Yeah. 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 That's I'm awesome. just you know. Yeah, so you're gonna have to hook us up because I think having a cigar with him and just kind of shooting the stuff with him would be yeah. kind of cool. What you, you know? do, Drew? He's a good dude. He's, what I mean. he's a yeah. He's a he's a cigar uh, uh, a reviewer on yep, YouTube. Yep. Yeah, nice uh, young guy. Um, wears a hat, so I don't know if his hair is black or not. So he can't be the the dark haired guy from Texas. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he does. Have, he does have dark hair. That's for sure. Oh, does he? I okay. know that. Yeah, I've seen yeah. him without a hat. He's got dark. Oh, okay. Yeah, Martina Maya cigar reviews. Martin Martin's great. Uh, I've been partnered with him since the beginning. Um, you know, and, and you know, part of what I want to do is grow together with people. You know, and and I think that's yeah. what kind of gets Dave and I together. Dave's looking to grow. I'm looking to grow, and it's just a mutual, uh, you know, vision. You you know, I don't yeah. want a one way street. I don't want it me me me. Um, I want to help out and then get, you know, the return it's 50, 50, the whole way. And Martin and I have grown together and, uh, man, he's just awesome. He, he's a good dude. I would highly recommend, uh, mm-hmm. connecting with him for sure. He, he's got the, he's got the catchphrase at the beginning, Martin and Maya back at it again. So you watch his videos <laughs> and that's how every single one starts. True. Have him come on the show and review sticks. If his reviews are better than ours, we'll, we'll, we'll use his. 
Because right? <laughs> <laughs> my reviews are like, yeah, complexity, flavor, and balance. Scale of one to ten is this. I liked it. This is what it tasted like. And by the way, don't golf with it or do go don't fish with yeah. it. Because some cigars right. are meant to sit down in a lounge and you can't yeah. freaking, you know, it's like the freaking, you know, the the freaking porcelain thing you collect right. like you know what i mean at all because construction can be a little bit fledgling in some brands right and whatnot so and i'm just like yeah i liked it didn't like it here's the rating and in a way it goes drew's a little bit more you know i i had the, the umami and the cocoa and it was like, <laughs> like yeah this cocoa is cool you know, what I mean? like, you know moving on you know oh that's uh, fine yeah, you no know, marcy this. does a great job and, and yeah he's got a he's got his way about doing it and i know dave for a fact, absolutely. We, we've talked offline. He loves the way Martin does his reviews. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I would love honestly, Drew, and and yeah. I always tell Drew like my wish list on the show, so that like the story geeks know that like it will happen eventually in time. And then Drew takes the note and then he goes and gets it. Like I wanted a cigar club guy, like freaking ten episodes back. I'm like, dude, we need to find dudes in cigar clubs. Drew does all of that stuff. You know yep. what I mean? We'll get Martin. We'll get him I, for you. Because he wakes drunk. up at 3 o'clock in the morning and doesn't have kids. Yeah, in the smoke. You know, I wake up at 5 <laughs> o'clock right. in the morning and have kids, but I'm chasing around my kid, you know? Well, that's, <laughs> all, that's, all I, that's all I came across, Nick. You know, I found him. I'm like, yeah. well, you know, I, no, I actually I went through and I looked at all the other cigar clubs, and I'm not, you know, nothing nothing uh, biased, but it was just that, you know, I like I like the way that him and Martin got along, mm -hmm. just like you and I. Because, you know, when I met you, I, I met you through an email. I sent you an email, Joe, and we talked about pairing cigars with uh, coffee liqueurs and things of that nature, and then that's how we became to be. And I, 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 I imagine that's how uh, Nick and Martin came to be as well. You know, and it's just pretty cool to see that uh, two Texans, can bring the game on and bring it on strong. Yeah. There you go. Texans, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I you guys, you guys got I, a lot of cigar cigar nuts out there, man. It's it's oh, great. Yeah, Texas is, is like a hot big. Well, Martin does a great well, job, though. Martin is like when I first came across him, it was a completely different way of introducing the yeah. cigar. I like how he comes from the first third, the second third, finals it off. Yeah. And um, when I saw him one night, I just sent him a message. I said, "I'm gonna send you some 45s, let you see what you could do with it." And he did a great job. I was really happy with it. And then when I started talking to Nick, he's like, I have this guy in Texas, Martin. I'm like, I know exactly what you're talking about. The guy's amazing. He's, he's really good. It describes a cigar, really gives you a nice picture of what it's like. And man, he does a really good job. And I'm happy that uh, he's working with yeah. Nick and he's going to be working with us on the event as well. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's, he's doing a really good job. And True. You know, we want to help everybody, as Nick said, you help everybody as much as you can. And oh, yeah. you want them to see him succeed as much as you do. And you, you go together on this process. You just don't leave somebody behind because it helps you out. You got to stick with them. And then once you get to that point where you're both there, you know, he's there with you and it, it's right. how it should be. It shouldn't be, you know, turn your back once you get to a point. Yep. Yep. Drew, make yep. a note. Let's get him on. And the topic is, I just want to talk about his process of when he cuts and lights and, and reviews a cigar. He doesn't give, give his industry secrets because that's his gig. And I, you know what I mean? Right. But I think you can yeah, get some yeah. more listeners. But honestly, I, I, I think the Story Geeks listeners would geek out on, hey, man, maybe I should go to a lounge or go to a club or whatever, or, or order online or whatever they do um, or join a cigar club and, 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 and just go. They could get some tidbits from his process for sure, especially That's like all three of you guys speak, of, speak highly of them. I, I yeah. think it'd be a super cool interview. So, Drew, get once, that done. So you geeks, give us I'm, ten I'm episodes. Just gonna you, I'm just gonna tell you this: once Martine and I are done with, you know, once we're done with Martine, uh, people are gonna just want to move to Texas, period, and be like, you know what, this is, I gotta be there. <laughs> and <start stoking. laughs> I want to move to Texas. How's how's the school system down there for kids? Good. Oh man, it's expensive. <laughs> it's magnificent. It's magnificent and expensive, but it's it's whatever. Well, we are <laughs> in really the Northeast. You know, he's going to have to speak Spanish uh, as well. That's right. You know what I mean? That's cool. Hey, so, yeah, I had a question for David. I was going to I was gonna ask you, so uh, uh, marketing, you know, getting that cigar out of, I, I'm assuming you're pretty much uh, on the East Coast, but now bringing it out here to the West Coast. I'm going to tell you right now, that's, uh, I think your brand will do very well in this state. Um, I'm already thinking of one guy I'm going to go see here afterwards, uh, and that's the guys over at Underground um, nice. Cigar because I think your 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 uh, portfolio would fit nicely into theirs. Nice, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're actually we're getting a lot of a lot of responses from Texas. Uh, we're in 
one store now in uh, Laredo, Texas, um, the Smoker's Alibi. And uh, just through the podcast and, and marketing it out there, we've got a really good following coming out of Texas. So uh, hopefully when it's all this COVID stuff settles down, we can get out there. We'll bring the rollers out to the events because uh, that's what we do. We like to bring the rollers out to our, at all our events at the, at the brick and mortars. And so people can see what we do. It's not something that you, we show pictures of a roller being in Nicaragua right. or Dominican Republic. They're all here. I mean, our, our guys have experience. We all work for big manufacturers back in DR from um, Davidoff to uh, Fuente. And they've been with us for about 25 to 30 years already. So wow. it, 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 it's good for them for to see that and experience it. And like we're doing something now, which uh, we're marketing and getting it out. That we just started yesterday, the Rollers one. And uh, it was a hmm. really big success on the first day. That we launched it yesterday. And it's what it is. It's, it's, a, um, it's a little cigar that the Rollers make every day for themselves, whatever tobacco they're, they're using. And yeah. it's, uh, oh, yeah. it's about a seven inch and it's about, about as thick as a pencil. But it's got a power behind it that it's just going to knock you down. And uh, everyone mm. seems to love it. And we did a really good job with it. So that's something that we like to bring to everybody and, and show what um, you know, what we can do and the experience of having that manufacturer here locally in the state. Yeah, so going to your website for the story geeks who are listening and not watching, Cigar. you go to martinezcigars.com, you click on the rollers blend. It's available in five packs. Looks like you got to stay on it because it's out of stock uh, here on the website, yeah. but you got to stay on it. But yeah, it's a uh, seven by thirty-five, and the strength gauge is a medium to full. And so this actually changes per whenever the rollers blends come out. So yeah, it could we be do it once yeah, a right. month. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. whatever we're making that day, um, they'll just make it right then and there. Uh, people always ask, "Oh, what's the blend?" It's usually just one particular leaf. About three of those three leaves in there, but it's one. We one Lajero, one Viso, and then just a wrapper, whatever we're using, and puts it out. It's usually, I would say, more than a medium. It's it's a full body. It, it, it's going to knock you down, but it has a lot of flavor behind it, and it's really light. It's a quick smoke, but uh, it's something different. You don't really get it unless you go to a factory mm. in the Dominican Republic or Nicaragua, yep. and uh, it, it's right off the table. And I think it's been 10 years that people have been trying to get their hands on them because people come in and say, how can I get that? And it was only for us, so... I came in and throw this little wrench in there, which was which the rollers were like, "Oh man, this is for us." But I said, "We gotta get this out there. People have to understand what what we do and what you guys do." So it's been a really big success. It sold out as of uh, last night, and uh, it comes out every uh, first Thursday of the month. Every first Thursday of the month, Story Geeks. Email me at Joe H at I'll give you Dave's email. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you can order exclusively from Dave. Dave, you might sell out before you get to the website. <laughs> you know, so yeah. What's, what's awesome about those guys is, is, you know, people love the limited stuff. And, sure. And that's really what it is. Every month, it's one and done. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to roll this blend. It, the one that just that just sold out, that's it. You're not going to get it again. You're not going to get that blend again. You're going to get another one next month and a month after that. And Dave, what's there? Probably about 200, maybe at the most, or right around that ballpark. We started around 250. Yeah. And so it was about 45 packs that we put out there, and uh, they went pretty fast. Um, yeah, I mean, the night, you know. Yeah, you guys are pricing them at 35 bucks for a five pack. Yeah. I mean, rock and roll. You know, for yeah, 35 yeah. bucks, that you can smoke like a, a, a you know. I know this word is overplayed, but it's like a true unicorn. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's not a manufactured unicorn. It's not a marketed unicorn or a rebanded unicorn. It's a real it's, unicorn. It's a real unicorn, man. <laughs> Shit. And the thing is, I, don't play golf with this thing because it's strong. It's not a medium body. It's a, it's a strong, full body. You got to eat before you, before you take that thing down. Mm. I'll take that challenge. That's what they told me. <laughs> That's what they told me at the Black Label factory when I right. couldn't smoke the Misfit. I says I'm purposely gonna have this with a cup of coffee, and I'm not gonna have breakfast, and I'm gonna have it. Like, oh my god! I'm like, dude, this freaking thing is strong. And this thing is awesome. You know, because I'm Misfit gonna send you guys. A, I'm gonna send you guys a packet of. of a, we have a couple left over for inside the shop for us, but. I'm going to put yeah. a five pack together for both of you guys. Send it out to you so you guys know what it is. Yeah, man. Stick all in right. one of those hats for me, too. All right. All right. I like to wear add, different too. hats. But don't. I hate it when they f don't send it to me in the package that you sent it to me. It crushed the hat. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I you know, I, it drives me crazy. I got freaking, you know, I pass, I'll, I'll pass it out. Because then some people, uh, we used to do Story Geeks on a Monday night. And we used to have, like, people come into the studio 
and watches on the screen in the next room. I'm sitting in the studio now, but then they would smoke cigars and hang out afterwards and all that stuff. And like I would pass out swag, and it's always the swag. I'm like, man, I freaking love this hat, but like it was crushed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can't have it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know. Yeah, like, you're going to have to get him a hat box if you're going to send him a hat. Not a hat box, but shit. Just, <laughs> just stick some freaking, uh, what is it? Like stick paper in it or something. I mean, stick a newspaper yeah, in just, it. Uh, we'll make sure it doesn't get crushed. You don't want it. Nice. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. it. Drew, Drew and I are like hat guys. Like we have freaking gazillion hats and freaking, you know. Same thing with you, Nick. If you want to throw one in, let me know. <laughs> yeah, we actually, it's funny you mentioned that. I'm, I'm expecting some samples today. I've been working on some stuff for, uh, these are limited. I only got two of these, and uh, they've been in my head. You don't want these. So, um, But we've got some coming for sure, and they're, they're going to be similar to this, and then probably another different one. There. I'll get you one. They're going to be great. Hell I'm yeah. for it. True. We'll have our freaking swag. We'll be like freaking, you know, be, hmm. we'll be styling. But, yeah, the Rollers blend super cool. Um, yeah. Dave, my next question. Do you guys have about 10, 15 more minutes? That's cool? Yeah, as much time as you need. All right, cool. Johnny, is that cool? That's cool. All right, he's cool. All right, cool. I just want to make sure, because we like to try to stay in the time frame, because there's a whole freaking, you know, well, yeah, there's a whole freaking, um, Johnny's barking in my ear. Right? There, there, there's a whole, like, you got to keep them down to a certain amount. Story Geeks back in the day used to be a three and a half hour show per per segment. That's a true story. <laughs> On Thursday, Oof. starting at 9 p.m. Eastern after Oof. another security show. Um, right. But you guys mentioned something. Uh, Nick mentioned something, and Dave mentioned something. And I want to get to Dave and get a little bit of a visual of, like, the factory and all of that. So start thinking about that, Dave. But, Nick, you mentioned something about when you started your business, you wanted to um, collaborate with other people and get the word out for that. Um, for their product and incorporate that into your business model to get the product into people's hands. And, and I think that from a sales rep perspective, um, that element is missing. Now, I know there's rules that you can't walk into a cigar shop and pass it out and this and that, and I get it, right? But, like, you can give it to a shop owner, and a shop owner – if they a brick and mortar shop owner, and if they were uh, intelligent enough to profile their buyers, wouldn't they give a couple of samples to like to hey check this out? Let me know what you think, especially for like the people who come in either daily basis, biweekly, but whatever the cadence is. The point of me asking you this is that like I think that there's not enough of that in in this industry. Yeah, there's collaboration works with cigars and it's marketing, and there there are pluses and minuses to collaboration. You know, it, especially if they're well, if one has more market share than the other, or one has more brand recognition than the other, or but when they're both like independently and willingly go into a collaboration, it becomes a super wonderful thing. And I just don't think that enough um, people in the, within the industry really do that and i just wanted to commend you on that because truly i think i truly i think because of 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 our age and the fact that like you're the ceo of your organization dave is 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 executive level within that organization very well needed you guys can pivot fact faster than a traditional uh, manufacturer that's that's that that's been around for a hundred years, say right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so, but I, I just I just wanted to take the time out to 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 commend you on that because I I think that that is the future of the cigar smoker, and I think it's because of other industries that act like that as well. For example, the craft beer industry, or the craft spirits industry, or even restaurants where. The, you know, one guy will bring, like, his food truck to a brewery. You know what I mean? Like, we, mm -hmm. we, we all see that as consumers. And I don't know about your neck of the woods, but we all eat it up as consumers. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I never sure. thought that I would be going to a brewery um, and spending $150 on, like, lobster sandwiches and two beers. <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. Like I, but, like, I do as a consumer. I do. Like, right. you know what I mean? And, by the way, there's people behind me in front of me who have the same idea as I. And I'm doing the math, and I'm saying, this is super cool. Because this is yeah. a, you know, and, yeah, they were Maine lobsters. People get all hyped about all of that stuff. And I travel a lot to Maine. They have a big craft brew scene 
over there as well. But like, like they have true like come to our place and we're gonna have y'all truck in the parking lot of our brewery and we're, and people just eat that up all day long. And I think that that is the future of cigar events. I think that there will be brick and mortars. I don't know if you ever thought about this, but teaming up with the brick and mortar to be their cigar club for the month. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's, for sure. No, know, it's, it's yeah, part of it. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. And you're right. You know, collaboration is huge. And, uh, you know, one of the things, the benefits of collaboration is because of the restrictions that we have in the industry for marketing. You know, that's the biggest obstacle I saw as soon as I started was I can't just advertise my business, you know, on the radio or who the hell listens to the radio, but you know what I mean? I can't put an ad, uh, you know, except in what cigar aficionado maybe. Uh, so it's, it's better to get it out to the, to people who talk to people. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I can help them at the same time, you know, all the better. And, uh, that's, that's why I think the collaboration is good. I think people, what you're saying is you enjoy it as a consumer, because I think part of it is you're seeing people work with other people, you know, that's not the division, like, like not to get political, but the things we're seeing now, there's a lot of divide, you know, no matter where you look, but in this industry, a cigar is a cigar. And, you know, whether you're a podcast or a live show or a manufacturer, you can work together. It doesn't matter because it's all about the cigar and the cigar consumer. Right. So whatever you can do to make that experience better for the consumer, I'm all for it. I'm hundred percent for it. Right. And all in, in economics theory, um, you know, you, you, it's, it's called modern utility and spillover effect, right? Which I mm -hmm. think is super cool. Um, you can mathematically, not to bore the Story Geeks listeners, but I do anyway. Um, you can mathematically calculate a formula of the amount of joy you would get from a candy bar. Like I've done it in economics class, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when you look at that and you look at the collaboration component, the collaboration component is like exponential numbers. We all learned this in the seventh or eighth grade, depending on if you were public school or private school, right? Right? And and and, and like use that, and, and, and it like it, the numbers are off the charts with collaboration. And I truly feel that future cigar events, uh, cigar events will have, like, if I owned a brick and mortar today. And Dave, maybe you could tell me I'm off my rocker, and please do. There have been plenty of guests who have said <laughs> that won't work, and I'll be like, cool, let's try it. Right, um, like do a dual event because the concept is you're building more awareness to the concept yeah. of the product. And if you don't believe me, why is Burger King always across the street from McDonald's? Why is this coffee shop always across the street? I'm um, New England from a Dunkin' Donuts because of spillover effect. You're building awareness of the brand, the concept of getting a breakfast sandwich and coffee. And there's enough of that awareness, and that's why they open up across the street from each other, and that gas stations and all that type of stuff. It's crazy. Or corn, if you're from the town I'm in. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not going in the corn business, that's for sure. That's crazy business, yeah, man. Yeah, no, no, definitely not. <laughs> That'd be a cool story geek show, Drew. We'll get my buddy Patrick on here, whose family, it's like fourth generation corn. And dude, it's crazy. Like, people freaking <laughs> go bananas for corn. It's wild. You know. That's awesome. Yeah, you know what? You talk about collaboration too, and, and, and I don't know if Dave wants to touch on it, but you know, um, Dave and, and Jesus over Martinez, they're collaborating on uh, you know creating a, a cigar right now uh, for somebody else. You know, for for one of the podcasts that we partner with, and you know, it's kind of it encompasses what Martinez is about. You know, they've been around 46, 47 years. You don't know about them. And like I said, Dave won't talk about this, but they help everybody else before themselves. And I, I, that's what I find commendable about their company. And I mean, a lot of people don't know, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen the show boardwalk empire. They make all the cigars for those. They make cigars for celebrity events. They rolled for some high end athletes. Like they, they really, put themselves behind the wall, so to speak, or behind the scenes and let whoever is moving forward with that concept of their business. So whether it's that athlete's party or whether it's the show or whether it's another cigar brand, I mean, Dave's told me a number of cigar brands that, that they've helped out get their start that you guys would know. And uh, I think it's great. And, and he's helping somebody out now, Dave, I don't know if you want to talk about those two cigars that are coming out that are awesome. They're going to be, it's going to be good. Yeah, we're actually uh, developing a cigar for um, the Cigar Pulpit. Um, we met them at the TPE, had a great relationship with them, and uh, uh, Nick was there, and he was asking 
I'd love to have a cigar one day. And I just said, well, let's do it. It's not hard to do. You want to get into it? Let's, let's develop a cigar for you. So we uh, developed two cigars. Uh, one's called the Bishop and one's called the Gator. Uh, one's Connecticut Shade and the other one is a Maduro uh, San Andreas wrapper. Uh, really great cigars. One's a full body, one's a uh, medium, a mild to medium smoke. Um, so we really took our time on this one. It's being released on the first week of the second week of September. And uh, it's one cigar that we're really, really proud of. And, you know, I can put it up to the levels of the 45 and the flat iron. Mm. Uh, we don't want to, we don't want to put something out just to put a name on it as a gimmick. You know, we, we have our name behind it. So it's something that we really put our time into it. Want to put something out there for everyone to enjoy and not for something that someone's going to smoke and then give it out to friends because they're not going to enjoy it. This is a cigar that is going to be up there and hopefully everyone's going to love it. I think they will. And uh, yeah, we, we like to help as many people as we can. People come into the, the factory all the time looking to start a brand or have their own personal line of cigars. And we're always open to it. We're always never not saying, no, it can't be done. So we do help uh, whoever we can. Uh, we've Amadol Cigars, if you guys heard, you know, when he was starting, he came in uh, years ago and, you know, Jesus, the type of person he is, he said, here's a couple molds and, you know, whatever else you need, let us know. We'll show you whatever else you need to know. And that's what they did. And, and look at, look at Amadola Cigars. He's doing a great job down in North Carolina. And uh, that's, that's what we're about. Our relationship go back 20 years. That's when we started with. Mm. We do uh, cigars for companies that, you know, want to just keep it quiet on who makes a cigar, which I totally respect. And then there's other companies that say, you know, we want you to be out there saying that you make our cigars. So that's, that's pretty much what we do. And that's pretty much what we concentrate on. Mm. That's awesome. And I'm it's sm- not. I'm not the Nick. I'm not the Nick that he's talking about at TP. Oh, no, sure, sure. The, the host you. of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I got gotcha. you. I followed that. Right. That's a good point. Good. I'm smoking that 45. Mo- it's more okay. my speed. Flavor. Yeah. Fla- yeah. Flavors off the charts. The ass component's still the same. Yeah. So Amazing, super, isn't it? super, like super impressive with that. The construction. Yeah. Our, our blender, uh, Marino. He's the one that gets that first. You know, he starts blending everything together, has a really good eye on what works and what doesn't work, along with uh, Jesus. Jesus' one is different. He, he he knows what tobacco goes with, and he can pick out a tobacco and say, all right, I'm going to put these these combinations together. He'll sit down with Marino. Marino says, all right, I got gotcha. you. Puts it together, and then we have our finisher, which is um, Christian, who does all the wrapping. And his, his, his technique on wrapping is incredible. I mean, you look at that stick, and it's just clean. That wrapper is... There's no bumps. There's no uneven wraps. The cap is nice. Everything fits really, really nice down there. So we have two guys that can just make a cigar and, and give you that quality consistency all the time. And one thing that Jesus does concentrate on is make sure that those cigars leave here the same way every time. So we're always concentrating on um, the quality of the smoke over the quantity. Uh, once mm-hmm. you get start putting the quantity in front, your, your, your production, your quality, your condition of that cigar is never going to be the same. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the box of the 45 to see what the hell I'm smoking. Uh, Dominican Nicaraguan blend. Um, it, it's super balanced. The ash still stays the same as I previously yeah. described. Uh, I bullet cut. Uh, I, I'm smoking the Robusto size. And uh, this is why I don't gamble, Drew, because I picked the flat iron first. And for me, it's the 45 is where it's at. Uh, oh, yeah. If I were to choose one. Yeah. Yeah, the 45 has... Uh, two Nicaraguan leaves and a Dominican leaf as a filler and as a Cubanito uh, binder. And then that one has the San Andreas wrapper on it. So mm-hmm. it really does a, a nice job on it. The Dominican leaf is what uh, Jesus's dad was using when he first started the business. So he wanted to marry what he, he brought into the company, which is a Nicaraguan leaf, marrying it with his father's. And then the Cubanito is what they both enjoyed. So he, it's, it's pretty much like a father-son duel with, you know, unfortunately his father's not around any longer, but it's something that he wanted to like, Give a part of those two in that cigar. Mm. Yeah. Nice. yeah, the retro hail is is yeah. friggin' oh. awesome. It is <laughs> retro awesome. hail. I just like I mean, I did it before, but when I lit it up, but the retro hail is friggin' awesome. And I just yeah. flicked the ash after it was an inch. And you know how like I go to the corner. Well, if if I can go to the, I have a square ashtray right here, but whatever. You know when you go and you go to flick the ash. I, I don't flick it. I just kind of like like glide it against the yep. corner of the ashtray. And you yeah. can almost feel like the pull from yeah. the cigar from how tight the ash is. It's like a snap. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's like a snap. It's it's it, and, and, it, and, and 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 that is as important. Um, 
when I get down to the next inch, I'm gonna. I I, I didn't get into the lines. I didn't pay it. I was so impressed with the little snap of the pull <laughs> that I didn't get. But sometimes you can see like the lines from from how yeah. they go, and they go darker, lighter, dark, almost like a yeah. a zebra, but lighter. Lighter ash is bigger than yep. it's not exactly striped like a zebra, but you know you got a visual and and, and when uh, that go when that ash falls, it stays the same. It, it doesn't break apart mm. like powder. No, it's no, like no. no. Hard it, rabber on or hard ash on that ash right. Uh, it it stays. It it, de it it definitely holds its form. And I will say this: I I typically retro hell three maybe four times through a cigar on this it? one. I was <laughs> it, well, yeah. But, you know, because I don't <laughs> want to blow up my palate because I'm smoking five other more cigars later that day. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, but this one here, I counted exactly 11 retros because I enjoyed wow. that the retro on the on this particular stick. And that's uh, pretty – and that, for me, that just – that says a lot. Uh, hey, just a newsflash here, uh, Nick. Um, I just went onto your website. Uh, not that I haven't been there before, but I uh, so I went on there and I actually became uh, order number fifteen oh nine. So just remember. Oh, that. nice. So oh, nice. Because, stick yeah, the hat in fifteen oh nine, and you have to worry about shipping. <laughs> 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 no, I, That's no, awesome. I, I, I want I want Dave's cigar, or I want Jesus' cigar, Martinez' cigar. I'm like, I'm getting that baby. I mean, he's offering up. I'm taking it. Uh, That's no, but awesome, I just want, Thank I you just so want, much. I appreciate that. I just, I just want really to let does. the listeners. I just want to let the listeners know it's very simple. You go in there, self explain. It explains, you know, the uh, the 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 Corona, the Robusto, and the Al Presidente. And I'll tell you, it was very easy for me to go through there, navigate. Uh, I was done in let's just say less than three minutes, and I picked the Robusto. I got in there before the fifteenth, so I will be getting those cigars next Perfect. month. Nice. Yeah, you'll be nice. in September. Nice. Thank you so much. Right. I really, I, I really do appreciate uh, that. That means a lot. Because you know? <clears throat> I do, I do huh? have other cigar clubs that I that I joined, just to kind of go through the process, learn it, talk about it. You know, just you know, yep. because people ask me to. I mean, I go, I go to lounges. I go, uh, even on a lot of our listeners, they'll email me throughout the week and they'll say, you know, what what did you like about it? Was the customer experience? They ask me all those you know questions that I really am about i'm about customer experience all the way so again very easy very very user-friendly site uh explanatory nice photos and you can't beat it and for the uh, and the values is that is that is, is there definitely so yeah. um thank you but uh, yeah and i'll be going to martinez's yeah. next and buy me a box <laughs> of those 40 <laughs> <laughs> nick nick my monthly they do he does a great job i mean the presentation on it what he does with it. Um, it's, uh, we've seen a lot of clubs that we look at. And um, when I came across his, just the presentation, the, the, the selection he gives you, like you were saying before, it's something that you know you can go to your cigar shop and say, do you have sure. this? And if you don't have it, you got to get it in for me. Just because the way he sets it up for you, um, yeah. it's not only cigars, just the whole presentation, the packaging. He's great customer service. I've, you know, I've been with him and you know, people called in and asked questions. He answers right away, and I always tell people we have a sticker on our on our on our right in our shop with the my monthly on there. I, I try to send as many people over. Coming from a manufacturer, you kind of want to stay away from things like that. But knowing yeah. him, how he does things, the type of person he is, I if you're all out there, you haven't been part of a, of a of a membership, then go to my monthly. You won't regret it. It's worth your money. <laughs> I mean, he is carrying the Martinez, but uh, definitely go go do, go there. You you won't regret it, man. I really 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 support him. Well, well, that's one thing Joe Thanks, and I Dave. always speak about. Yeah, they, yeah, I was going to say so that's nice one thing Joe. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one thing Joe and I talk about. We, we speak about it. Yeah, Joe and I speak about about going to the you know the brick and mortars and you know one of the one of the su true successes of a of a brick and mortar is customer attention, customer service, customer relations, whatever you want to call it. If you're not attentive to your customer, they're going to go shop somewhere else. But yeah. uh, but that makes the, you know, like I said, that that makes for great, uh, you know, an experience online because you know sometimes you don't know what you get online, especially if you go to uh, what's that called, Wayfair. Wow. I'm back. I'm backing off. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just joking. Anyway, I've but, never uh, ordered anything from Wayfair. Let's just get it out there. I've just, I've just, I've heard the stories. But anyways, uh, yeah. I digress. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that to me, you know, speaks volumes when when your customers can give you uh, some pretty good ratings and 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 you know and and talk good. So. Um, you know, for the Stoke Geek listener, yeah, check them out, man. You're going to love that. Easy to navigate. As I said, I did it in less than three minutes, and I'm going to get my box in September. I can't wait. <clears throat> I want to end the uh, this interview, and if you guys want to check in post-event and let us know how that gets, we could do a quicker half-hour segment or an hour, so whatever you want to do. Um, just, you know, keep in touch with, 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 with email uh, or sell. Uh, you guys have my cell. And um, I, I'd love, Dave, to give the Story Geeks listener a visual of if they were to take a trip to Martinez Cigars. Because I truly, like, I, I, I go I go to Cayo Ocho once a year. That's 8th Street over in Little Havana. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't go through a Story Geek episode without mentioning that. Um, it's a picture of me and my son, and my family on my desk with with that picture, and I, I try to update it every year if the picture comes out all right. So it's Miami, so sometimes I'm a little blurry, right? <laughs> Don't worry, mom's driving, right? It's all safe, you know. Not probably not gonna get one this year because of COVID. I'm scheduled to be there in September, but that that looks like it might not happen. But uh, you know, for the Story Geeks listener who travels. Or has an opportunity to uh, go to New York City, um, you know, and 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 go to your shop. Like, give us kind of a visual as to you know what it is, what it's like. Is is it a sit down shop? Is it just rolling and you just there? Is it just you can't walk in? Because some of them you just you can't walk in, right? Like Kai Ocho, like I mean, I I like I said, I, that whole strip is just so cool. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you just go down. I don't know if you guys never been to Little Havana. Like it's such a freaking awesome, awesome. You, you got the vibe. Some of them have like rollers that like have like Cuban bands there, and mm -hmm. it's Miami. So you believe it or not, you can't smoke inside some of them. It's weird, right? You're like, oh my god, yeah. but like you're in Florida, so you can get away with it temperature wise, you know. And the, and the way they separate it with a patio and the bar area. Some of them have bars. Some of them don't. Um, so, but, but, but take the story geeks listener to, um, what the factory is like, can they visit it? Um, what, what they can expect, uh, from a yeah. potential visit. Do you allow visitors to go there? Like, oh, yeah, you can come in. Okay. Yeah. You can, cool. you can come in and, uh, you walk in, it's, um, it's about 250 square feet. That's all we have. Oh. Um, you walk in, it's a, it's a storefront. Big glass window it has uh, the original neon sign from when they opened in 1974. It says handmade cigars on it. Um, and when you walk in, you go into pretty much of a time time machine. You go back to like the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Everything's original from when we started. Uh, walls are just full with all different types of pictures, memorabilia, uh, Yankee stuff, Boston stuff, because we're all mixed Boston and Yankee fans. Sure. So we're all in there. <laughs> um, and the thing is, there's it's not a lounge. People think, oh, it's like a lounge. Can we? We have about four or five office chairs that we have scattered around where nice. people could just sit. And uh, you can sit literally right next to the roller, have a drink. You can bring your own drink. We have a store that's right next door to us. You can get some beers, bring it over. You can get a bottle of scotch, whatever you're drinking. Sit down, smoke, and then you just get to see what we do every day. You don't have, we don't keep anybody outside. We'll be packaging packages right there. The rollers will be making everything there. You can talk to them. Um, it's an experience that you really don't get anywhere else. Mm. Um, a lot of places want to keep you behind the counter right? and see it from a vision. You can get in there, take pictures. You can talk to the rollers. You can talk to the is there every day. Uh, I'm there. All the guys that are working there are there. So it's, it's like going into a small version of a factory in either Dominican Republic or uh, Nicaragua. The difference is the lifestyle that we have is represents how it is back home for them in Tambori, uh, Santo Domingo, which is a small little town where it's pretty much the center of all tobacco business and you get the experience we all talk to each other everyone it could be a wall street guy sitting right next to a guy that is a union worker and everyone gets along there's no great conversation um on fridays and saturday nights 
after the rollers are done, that's pretty much when we start partying. Uh, we can get probably like 50 to 60 people in there. We're playing music, playing dominoes, uh, food's coming in. So we want you to be part of the family. We don't want you to be a guest. Like if you come in pre the COVID whole thing um, on a Friday, you would probably see about seven or eight lines of uh, suitcases. There's a lot of people from all over the world, all over the country. The first thing they do is stop at our place because they've been there so many times. And mm-hmm. They're in there just hanging out. So it's, it's an experience that you won't understand until you see it. Um, I try to give it as much as I can on Instagram. I post a lot of videos of what we're doing from making the cigars to hanging out playing dominoes. So it's something that, uh, I, again, you have to see it. It's, it's a welcoming. And once you, become, once you come in, you're part of that Martinez family. We'll always remember you. And, uh, yeah, all your listeners out there, if you're ever in New York, don't hesitate. Just come on in. We're open. Uh, we start rolling at 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, rollers are there until 2, and then we're there until like 7, 8 o'clock at night. Fridays and Saturday, we could be there until 2, 3 in the morning. So it is a retail yeah. shop where someone could walk in if they're in town and purchase some yeah. cigars as well. Cool. Yeah, and, it, and it's everything is probably about two weeks off the, off the table. So we let them age for about two weeks off the table. Yep. They're in the cases. And then uh, you're right then and there. You can get an unbanded one. You can get one with a band. You can pretty much just hang out all day. We, we don't even care if you stay there the whole time since we're open to close. You're mm-hmm. more than welcome. Yep, that's super cool. That 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 sounds like my my, my spot. I, I go, I go to Havana Cigar Club right next door. It's ultra convenient, but I also go to mm-hmm. a smaller cigar shop that I always mention. It's Churchill Smoke Shop and Lounge, and like it's it's eight hundred square feet. Yeah, cash and carry is cash and carry is ridiculous. He could close down a lounge and and just survive on cash and carry. Yeah, right. Um, but I've always missed the element of the roller. And the mystique of the roller. When I was yeah. on pre-Story Geeks, I used to do a, a, a cigar radio show called Cigar Club Radio. It was Friday afternoons, 4 to 6 p.m. And I opened up for a gentleman who was on the radio for his, his uh, financial show. It was his 25th anniversary, and I was like three months in radio. And like I actually, and, and we couldn't smoke in the buildings, right? Mm. Uh, so I actually hired a roller with a translator. Right, and um, it was crazy. He was like, "Wait a minute, you're gonna put him on the radio? He doesn't speak English." I go, "It works for Yan- Yankee baseball. Why, why, why wouldn't it work for freaking for, for us?" Like, you know what I mean? And, 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 and so, so, so we had so we had like a visual of like what it was like for him to show up to an event, and people were rolling in cigars. He was selling cigars. You couldn't smoke them there. Then we told everyone, that, you know, it's a ten minute drive. Here's the address for, for for the lounge that we're gonna be at after the show. And it was super cool, man. We ended up with like seventy people. We That's had to awesome. go outside because you can't fit seventy people in that building, right. let alone COVID, right? And and yeah, and, right. and whatnot. And it's like it's the same thing, man. You got pull up Scott, pull out chairs, and and I mean he has lounge like re- recliners now, but like uh, it reminds me of when I owned the cigar shop. Uh, my partner was partners with another gentleman at the Prudential sh- Center in Boston, right? So they had a cigar kiosk. And then, but his cigar was in Dedham. It's just outside of Boston, right? I know Nick knows where, where, where I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. It's still open today. It's called Courthouse Cigars. And you walk in, right? There's no rollers, but you're talking four or 500 square feet. All the cabinets are lined out. You got the counter over there. And he's got four chairs and a sniffed uh, a bottle that, that's being sniffed or whatever. And right around the corners, you could get a liquor store. You know what I mean? To get you on. And people would just stand around and just talk for hours. And like yeah. when I when I owned the cigar shop, I was, I I actually hired an employee for my spot so I could go hang out in Dedham. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is and 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 our shop was like that. It was a BYOB. We did a lot of pipe tobacco too. This is the late nineties and the early two thousands. So we did a lot of pipe tobacco volume. We were in down. We were on Wicked and Street in Providence, which is one of those strips that you know everybody can shop and do all of that. And like it was super cool, right? Because people would would come and hang. You had the suitcases. People would come and hang, and they were catching a flight out, or you know, some people would get real drunk and freaking call the airline and rebook it and get a hotel at Providence. <laughs> like there was always someone around, and 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 yeah. and and I've seen a metamorphosis from that. To because of smoking restrictions, now there's cigar shops that you can just smoke in. 
right? They're bars that you're smoking, and they're missing that element. And that's why I love the mystique of going to, like, Kaya Ocho uh, yeah. over there in Miami because, like, you know, you walk around, you have one. You know, I, I can bring my son into the cigar shop because there's no smoking in some of them because you have to smoke outside. So I can go and pick and choose and like I ask it in for a separate bag because I get the mixed bag of what they roll there for the different mm -hmm. factories. And I just say, give me the business card. I put it inside because for me, I just grab it and I'm like, oh, I liked it. What Because I like that mystery aspect, but I also mm -hmm. like that mystique aspect in there. And I think there's not enough shops that hold on to that. Mm -hmm. um, but that is like an originator. Like that, that's like, other than the rollers, that's exactly how our shop was. And, that's and awesome. yeah, and if I ever did, like, we, we didn't have freaking flat screen TVs. We had no. 56K modem, so there was no freaking people serving, uh, people weren't on their phones. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it was, you know, you got a visual, right? We had flip phones that you didn't have freaking in there on your phone, right? <laughs> and, 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 and like, we had like a little TV, and the only freaking TV show we would watch is, is is eight o'clock on a Saturday night was cops like you know what I mean like well, we're, well, I don't know why like we just freaking like, love cops and then like we would always be like okay he's gonna run is he gonna cry like we would always like make bets be like you know what I mean and and, and like but, but that was only on for an hour right because there was no on demand we had a VCR you know what I mean like you know so yeah. so so like that was our visual and like we only watched like that hour of TV and the rest was just like freaking you know just people. Just hanging, you know what I mean? The equalizer. Yeah, yep. yeah. When we and that's a great thing about yeah. it. It's just everyone talks. It doesn't matter who it is. You just have this great conversation, and you know it's lasting. And then you remember the conversation you have with somebody, and they come back in, and you just pick it up like it was before. So yeah, yeah. It's one of those things. It's 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 undescribable. You just got to be there just to experience it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Nick, any last words? Now nah, go see Dave. There you go. Dave, any last words? <laughs> no, just uh, thanks for being on here, man. It was, it was a great, great honor. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to coming back on and showing you uh, talking about the, the TPE cigar once we get it done. Yeah, and yeah, I'd, love, sure. I'd love to do a, a show. Uh, I, I know um, a couple of factories that would be part of that, like 50. So, and I'd love to do, like, a roundtable table. With you yeah, guys I'll bring well. uh, Jesus yeah. with me. Jesus, yeah. Jesus will be able because today is a busy day for him. We do it's the last day of the week, and this time it's, it's kind of. But I can uh, I'll, I'll arrange it with him to have it on there because he knows all the factories that you know. He's been in that shop since he was 12 years old, so he knows what the changes of New York and all the factories yeah. in there. Because mm. New York, we don't have that many smoking lounges as people might think. We probably have, I think, six. Sure. In the city, in Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. So he can explain all that to you, and it's a good little history with him can tell you. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. When I started Stogie Geeks and I said, you know, email me at Joe H at StogieGeeks.com, and I encouraged the Stogie Geek listener to go to a brick and mortar, I was amazed at the emails that I got of them saying, dude, like, it's a 45-minute drive to my closest brick and mortar. I'm like, where the hell do you live? And then it's, right. like, it's like, once you get outside of, like, the East Coast, you know what I mean? It mm -hmm. becomes very, very spaced out. And the hot spots, as we were talking, you know, a couple hours ago or whatever, the hot spots are like, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, Texas. Northeast is always a boutique chases for sure. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? But, but like, those are real, real hot spots. California, the, there's like two cigar. When, when we go to a security event, it's like two cigar shops. You know what I mean? When we Crazy. go to freaking Vegas, it's like Casa Fuente. Or freaking the Davidoff Lounge, Davidoff. you know what I mean? And it's like those are experiences within themselves, and they are what they are, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, you know, but they're not. They're just so, in my opinion, watered down. Like you know, like you know, you corporate. Either, corporate. You need big breasts yeah. to serve a drink. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then when you talk about not, but I was shocked, honestly, more Casa Fuente than the Davidoff Lounge. The freaking humidor attendant was this chick, right? And she had like a freaking like 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 uh like a uh, I don't say like a she had a short hair like ultra short, right? And she yeah. was like suited up, and she freaking would come out and like her and myself and Paul Azadorian, the founder of Story Geeks, would just geek out with her for hours talking about the freaking Rosado wrapper and how it's different from this and that. And <laughs> we'll go back and it was like, so I was like, okay. So it's like, okay, yeah, I know it's corporate, but like they, Casa Fuente still tried to hold on to that tradition. 
Yeah. Davidoff, yeah. who's the guys? Eh, kind of on their own planet, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm not, you know. So I was like, yeah, I want to go to Casa Fuente. And, 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 and Paul and myself, we'd get off the plane and we're like, we're going to Casa Fuente. Like, we didn't even check an hotel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, it's super cool. So, yeah. But I want to thank both of you guys for uh, coming on the show. Uh, thank Drew, thank any you. last words? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I I finally figured out why Texas, why we have so many cigar lounges here. And it's it's it, it just dawned on me about a week ago. It's either too damn hot, so we all go to the cigar lounge and use up the air, air conditioner and the rabbit airs and whatever else. And, or it's too damn cold, so we go back there and we use the heater and the big screen TVs and all the cigars that are there. So it's uh, that's why it's, Texas, it's... It's it's a great place to be when you uh, for a smoker because you definitely get to meet all kinds of walks of life. Anybody uh, from all all over the world. I mean, I, I've I've met a lot of people down at Prestige uh, uh, Lounge over there in Bedford, and and that's my home lounge. And I'll tell you, the people that come there, the great camaraderie, and like you said earlier, Nick, the equalizer. That stick is the equalizer. Doesn't matter what background you're from. Uh, doesn't know anything. All it knows is that. You're going to have a great conversation, and you may learn yeah. a, thing, a few things or two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. Absolutely. Uh, and, guys, thank you. Thank you for coming on our show as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank guys. you. This was awesome. I had a blast. Thank you, guys. Uh, I, I appreciate reaching out. And this was great. We'll, yeah. we'll definitely keep you posted on, on the uh, big main event, the TPE cigar. We'll, maybe we'll come back on if you'll have us. And yeah. uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted, man, for sure. Yeah, this was can, great. We I can do a pot, too. I love it. I, I, I sure. got so much more to ask. I could go for another two hours. For sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? I go for, I, and he can. He I, will. I'll go. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, because I have so many I have so many business questions for Dave, like 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 logistical business questions about like, you know, I don't know, just for you know, would you ever consider leaving Manhattan? You know what I mean? Like, you know, like um, I know that's up for I- Jesus and all that, but like but like that's a tough the premium cigar industry, and I'm not looking for a direct answer. And if you want to give a one liner, that's for a, a, a oh, we're actually to, working on. But, uh, but like, it's a tough industry, and you're in yeah. Manhattan. Like, yeah. dude, like there are much friendlier towns you could go mm-hmm. in. You know what I mean? We're, so <laughs> we're we're always going to keep the original location, but we're actually um, in the works. Once uh, once things get a little bit more, we're gonna open up a big manufacturing center just outside the city. Mm. Just think of like a brewery. So. You come to the shop in Manhattan, we'll bring you up to the manufacturing center up, which is about 45 minutes north of the city, and we'll have all our rollers and everything there because we're producing more cigars, and uh, it's something that we're working on now. So we're looking at like um, about a 10,000 square foot space. We're going to add some more rollers. We'll make the boxes there. Uh, The whole goal is to make everything here in the state. So getting out of the city will reduce pricing in terms of tax wise. Right. So that's why we're looking at everything. But we're always going to keep that location there. Right. Because I'm looking at your website, and I'm running the freaking business numbers, and I'm saying, whoo, those are tight margins. You know what I mean? You know, you know Nick's, uh, Nick's in Ohio, right? right? And I'm like, ah, hey, he's got some playroom. He's cool. You know what I mean? He's, he's coasting. But I'm like, man, you're in the middle of Manhattan. Like, oh, I'd love to get his Zeus and, 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 and talk to him about, like, even if he wants to come on separate, like, open invitation to talk about, like, his pilgrimage to that location. Like what, oh, what, what was in it? Like why? Like what was near it when it started? Obviously you've been there for 26 years. How has that environment changed, you know, for the better or worse? And, and I'd love to have like all those different conversations. So yeah, you know, anytime I'll get them sit- on for you and then yeah. uh, sit down and talk to them. Definitely. Whenever you talk to him, uh, I will email both of you the link on Monday and we will, um, you know, show him the link of the site Have and, and oh, whenever he wants to get on, I'd love to just pick his brain about that and have him on for sure and, oh, and you can come as yeah. well it's a good story too man. yeah it's a great yeah, story yeah i'd, I'd love to hear the story for sure I, I and and i think the story geeks listeners would 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 like that as well so um story geeks go to storygeeks.com slash 337 you can get the show notes and url uh of both these fine gentlemen i want to thank nick and dave for appearing on this episode of story geeks always big thank you to my little doc head kid from texas Mr. Drew Gavin, thank you very much. Story Geeks, remember, we keep the conversation going all week long. Go to StoryGeeks.com, Facebook.com, forward slow Story Geeks. Email your complaints to Drew at StoryGeeks.com. 
special thank you to J.C. Newman Cigar Company, Havana Cigar Club, and Placencia Cigars. We'll see you next time. Peace.